Hey, my name is Buster Odeholm. Today I'm going to show you how I use distortion in a mix. Today I'm using JST Heat. You can use whatever you want, but this is a great option for bringing the glue to your mix. Uh, this is the mix I got uh, right now. So I'm going to go through all of these channels and show you exactly what I did to uh, achieve this sound. So let's start with drums here. I'm going to mute the other stuff for now. Uh, the drums sound like this, soloed. So distortion is really important to getting a powerful drum sound, especially in this genre. What it brings for me is it glues all of the drums together and it also gives length to the transient instead of having the transients be really sharp sounding. And I use distortion in a bunch of different stages on the separate shells and I also use it on the drum bus and I also use it in parallel. So in all of the stages in my drum mix I use distortion and without that my drum mix would fall apart really quickly. So I'm going to turn off the heat plugin on my drum bus and go through the separate shells and show you what heat does there. So let's begin with kick. This is already going through my parallel chains with compression uh, that we have here. And I can go through those once we've gone through all the shells. So our kick here with heat sounds like this. And here's what it sounds like without heat. Already here, I can hear the high end being really clicky in a bad way. Uh, I like high end on my kicks, of course, but clicky high end kind of sounds out of place in a, a really powerful metal mix like this. So with it, you can really you can really hear that high end tighten up and not being as pokey sounding. Uh, it's more glued into one sound. So let's see what I did here. Um, I'm using the default here. Drum power uh, is the mode. Um, and I'm using 10% uh, saturation on the kick and all the other bands as well. And I've kind of used uh, the main heat knob to dial in the amount of uh, saturation overall. I'm also using this high cut feature uh, I'm going to show you what it sounds like with and without this because it's quite a difference. So this is cutting off some of that super high, high end over 12K. So without this, uh, that frequency range above like 12K usually uh, I feel like it doesn't, it's not musical to my ears at least. I usually want to filter that out, but I, at the same time, I want to use a lot of distortion on my drums. But when doing that, the distortion produces a lot of that frequency range. So that's why we have to go in and cut that off uh, after this distortion. So that's my kick setting. Let's move on to snare. So this snare is also going through my parallel chain, which I will show you later. So here's without uh, JST heat. <laughs> here's with. The snare sounds a lot thicker now and more like a unit. I'm using the snare top preset here as a starting point. And to have minimal phase shifts, I'm moving the bands up here in, in the high end to make this uh, less facey sounding. And I got a lot of body in my snare now. So let's move on to toms. There's a bunch of toms in this song. Here's what they sound like without JST heat. And here's the width. A 
a lot more powerful, a lot more low end. Um, I'm using the floor tom preset here. Uh, still the mode just a touch sounds great. I'm gonna gonna just go over my parallel chains real quick to show you what that does. Here's what the parallel stuff sounds like. Here's what the dry bus sounds like. And if we bring those together, it becomes this. Cool. So having distortion on my shell tracks really helps me get that glued sound with my parallel buses. And it won't be the same without that distortion. So now we're gonna check out my drum bus here. We have even more distortion going there. So with all of that stuff and without the distortion on my drum bus, it sounds like this. And with I'm not going super hard on the drum bus since we distorted the tracks a lot already. Uh, but this brings a lot more glue and a lot more length to the hits, which I really like. So that's the drum sound. I really like what JST is bringing to my shells and it really glues everything together nicely. Let's move on to bass. I'm actually using JST as my bass amp here. I'm also using it on the subs. So this is what my bass sounds like right now. So we have two tracks here, um, or three tracks. We have the bass DI going to two tracks, and the two tracks are sub and grit. So let's start with the sub. It's really important to have different tracks for the distorted bass and the sub bass. Uh, I process these two completely different. So here's my sub track. I'm using this plugin here to get a bit more lows from the bass. The bass is not that low tuned here. So I'm introducing a lower octave at 30% with this plugin. Then we have filters here, 35 and 150 Hertz. Compression here to even out the playing. Then I'm using JST Heat here for some distortion only on the, the lows here, 72%. So I'm muting these two bands. Here's what it sounds like without. Here's a width. So I'm distorting quite a lot here with just the touch mode. So even more compression. And filters. So now I have a super even, nice low, low end. So let's move on to the grit track. I'm actually using JST Heat as the amp here. Uh, here's what it sounds like only with the DI. Here's what it sounds like with JST. So as you can see here, I've muted the low band here. I'm only using the mid and high band. This distortion is at 100%, 74% here. I'm using the Hellraiser setting, which is a great amp. I've used a lot. So this uh, preset is hype bass and it really sounds great on my DIs. You don't really need much to make it sound good. So this kind of has like a built-in cab as well. So you don't need a cab sim for this. It just sounds great out of the box. So after that, we have some EQ. <laughs> some gating for my noise CDIs. Some Soothe. Takes care of those. Some multiband. And some compression. And together with the sub, sounds like this. Cool. So that's my bass tone. As you can see, I'm using saturation all over the place and it's really important to get a good bass sound. 
Uh, let's move on to guitars. So here's my guitar sound without JST heat. Sounds good, but I think you can hype it up a bit more to get some more excitement out of the sound. So this is with JST heat. So I'm focusing the attention more to the mids with JST heat here, uh, just using the overall saturation and it just kind of glues the sound together and makes it more mid focused and makes it sit in the mix a lot better. So guitars already have a lot of distortion, but using subtle distortion like this at the bus stage can really help you focus the guitar sound and make it fit in the mix way better. So the last stage of distortion is my instrument busts. So I'm gonna mute the synths here and we can listen to what it sounds like without distortion. And here's width. As you can hear, the low end is way fatter. Uh, you can hear way more snare room, but the snare transient is not damaging your ear. It's a nice and smooth sounding, and it really brings the instruments together as one unit. So as you can see, I'm using distortion on all stages. So channel stage, bus stage, and now on all the instruments at once. And it really does something different on each stage and adds something to the mix. So using distortion on the instrument bus really brings cohesion to the song. So if you feel like your mix is sounding thin, JST Heat is a great option to make it sound way better.